Hello, everyone. I'm Shane Smith, the author of The Pernicious Weed, Anti-Tobacco Sentiments in Periodical Literature, 1800 to 1870, published in The Historian in 2015. Today, I'm exploring an often overlooked chapter in the history of tobacco reform. While many people think of the anti-tobacco movement as starting with the landmark 1864 Surgeon General's Report, the fight against tobacco has much deeper roots. In the early 19th century, a significant movement emerged in the United States, laying the groundwork for later anti-tobacco campaigns. Anti-tobacco reformers at the time were deeply engaged in a multifaceted critique of tobacco. They used the period's periodical literature to advocate for their cause. These early activists consisted of a mix of medical doctors, businessmen, religious leaders, and educators, among other professions. Many were inspired by the broader Second Great Awakening's emphasis on social reform. Their efforts were characterized by a commitment to voluntary abstinence through moral persuasion, contrasting with later movements that pursued legal pro prohibition alongside voluntary measures. Despite lacking the scientific advancements of modern times, these reformers made arguments that resonate with today's anti-tobacco rhetoric, though some were quite exaggerated. Some scholars argue that American tobacco activism has only witnessed two substantial waves during the Progressive Era and the movement that emerged in the 1960s. Contrary to these interpretations, my article supports the view that anti-tobacco activism was significant in the early 19th century. During this time frame, tobacco faced a comprehensive critique that addressed it as an agricultural, social, physical slash health, and moral evil. The remainder of my presentation traces each of these in turn. Deeply concerned with the agricultural impacts of tobacco cultivation, reformers painted a dire picture of its environmental consequences. Tobacco farming led to severe soil depletion by focusing on a single crop. The repetitive nature of tobacco cultivation on the same land resulted in a rapid exhaustion of essential nutrients. Without crop rotation or diversification, the soil became increasingly impoverished, unable to support continued agricultural productivity. The consequences were evident as the land's capacity to sustain crops diminished, leading to a cycle of moving to new plots once the old ones were exhausted. This issue was not merely an environmental concern, but also an economic one. As the soil became less fertile, planters faced diminishing returns on their investment. The need to constantly seek new land created a sense of urgency among reformers who saw tobacco farming as unsustainable. The idea was that tobacco farming not only eroded the land, but also led to a broader decline in agricultural productivity. Anti-tobacco advocates described how tobacco's demands led to worthless properties and prompted a westward migration in search of better soil. These authors urged planters to shift away from this destructive crop to preserve soil health. The Southern Planter, a publication of the time, echoed these sentiments, referring to Virginia's exhausted lands as trophies to the tobacco demon. Reformers also addressed the labor-intensive nature of tobacco cultivation. Tobacco's labor requirement was seen as a significant burden compared to other crops like wheat or corn. Reformers detailed how tobacco's high labor demands consumed a planter's time and resources, leaving little opportunity for other productive activities. The constant attention required for tobacco meant that planters had less capacity to improve soil health or engage in crop diversification. Planters were said to even neglect family gardens to expend the labor on tobacco production. Furthermore, tobacco's impact extended beyond the land to the broader agricultural ecosystem. The focus on tobacco led to deforestation as large amounts of wood were needed for plant beds and fencing. This deforestation contributed to erosion and further degradation of the land. Overall, we see that 19th century reformers viewed tobacco cultivation as a destructive force in agriculture. 
the monocultural system, labor demands, and environmental degradation associated with tobacco farming were viewed as significant threats to sustainable agricultural practices. Anti-tobacconists were not only concerned with tobacco's agricultural impacts, but were also deeply troubled by its physical health effects. They argued vigorously against the use of tobacco, presented it as a potent and pervasive poison with far-reaching detrimental consequences for the human body. Tobacco was often described in alarmist terms. The farmers highlighted tobacco's emetic and toxic properties, citing reports that even a drop of tobacco oil can induce convulsions and death in animals. For humans, the mere application of tobacco or nicotine was said to cause severe nausea and prostration, a testament to its potent poisonous nature. Anti-tobacconists likened tobacco to other narcotics, such as opium, though they considered it less powerful. They argued that while tobacco might initially provide a sensation of exhilaration, it ultimately led to depression, innervation, and a deterioration of the nervous system. Regular use was said to disrupt natural brain function, impair mental clarity, and degrade the individual's intellectual capacity over time. Tobacco simulation, stimulation was deemed artificial and unsustainable, contributing to a cyclical need for further narcotic stimulation. Reformers noted that nature seemed to warn against tobacco use through initial symptoms like nausea, chest pains, and dizziness. These reactions were viewed as early indicators of tobacco's poisonous nature. Despite these warnings, tobacco users continued their habits. The long-term health implications of tobacco use were considered dire. Chronic consumption was associated with a range of debilitating conditions. Reformers highlighted that tobacco consumption could shorten life expectancy and lead to various maladies, including impaired intellectual function, disrupted nervous system operations, cancerous tumors, loss of the sense of smell, loss of taste, tooth decay, gum disease, digestive disruption, respiratory diseases, and overall physical debilitation. The physical appearance of users was said to be notably affected with their facial muscles becoming flaccid and their skin developing a gaunt, discolored look. The dangers of secondhand smoke were also emphasized. Reformers claimed that non-smokers, particularly women and children, suffered from the harmful effects of smoke exposure. Secondhand smoke was believed to contribute to a decline in the health of both the smoker's immediate family and their future progeny, potentially leading to a weakened American physique and early deaths among youth. Tobacco addiction was described as particularly insidious, with the habit becoming almost as necessary for life as food. The struggle to quit was likened to a desperate fight, comparable to battles with alcohol and opium addiction. The physical and psychological withdrawal symptoms were depicted as severe and enduring. Finally, reformers drew attention to the harmful effects of tobacco manufacturing on workers in their communities. Tobacco factory workers were said to often exhibit signs of poor health, such as jaundice, emaciation, and respiratory ailments. The manufacturing environment was described as a carnal house or Pandora's box fraught with health risks that extended to the surrounding neighborhoods. Overall, anti-tobacconists painted a grim picture of tobacco's physical health impacts, arguing that its use led to a host of severe and debilitating conditions. Their critiques underscore tobacco as not merely a nuisance, but a profound and pervasive health hazard. The social impact of tobacco was a significant concern for 19th century reformers. Tobacco's influence also permeated daily life and altered social norms and personal behaviors. Critics argued that tobacco's omnipresence symbolized a broader societal decay. Tobacco was described as an insidious force akin to an Egyptian plague of frogs that infiltrated and corrupted all facets of society. Reformers like Thomas Wentworth Higginson saw tobacco as a ritualistic and senseless luxury that symbolized a marker of cultural decline and a civilizational failure. 
Economic arguments against tobacco usage were also prominent. Reformers highlighted the financial burden tobacco imposed on individuals and families. It was noted that the cost of tobacco consumption led to significant economic strain with expenditures on cigars, snuff, and related items diverting resources away from essential needs and contributing to poverty alleviation. Reformers decried the associated loss of cleanliness and the contamination of public and private spaces. Tobacco's pervasive odor and the unsightly presence of spittoons were seen as symbols of degradation. Sources denounced tobacco for its offensive impact on public and private spaces, condemning its use in churches, homes, and public transport. Critics also pointed to the negative effects of tobacco on personal demeanor and social interactions. Tobacco was seen as making individuals and their surroundings unpleasant. The odor from tobacco use was described as pervasive and offensive, affecting breath, clothing, and general hygiene, rendering individuals socially unappealing. Tobacco was criticized for its impact on societal roles and personal ambition. Writers argued that tobacco consumption led to idleness and wasted potential. Stories of individuals whose lives were impeded by their tobacco habits were used to illustrate the broader and social consequences of tobacco use. Tobacco was equated with other forms of intemperance, such as alcohol and its capacity to induce passivity and squander resources, directly contributing to problems with poverty. In summary, 19th century reformers saw tobacco as a profound social evil manifesting in pervasive contamination, financial waste, and moral decline. Tobacco's influence was viewed as a symbol of societal decay, undermining personal dignity, public cleanliness, and economic stability. Reformers argued for the urgent need to address tobacco's grip on society to restore individual well-being and broader social integrity. Beyond its other detriments, tobacco faced severe moral condemnation from reformers who perceived its use as fundamentally corrupting to both body and soul. Reformers said that tobacco jeopardized not just physical health, but the eternal destiny of its users. Reformers saw in tobacco an embodiment of human fallibility, a symbol of the constant human yearning for indulgence in what seemed unnecessary and harmful. The metaphor of tobacco as the forbidden fruit was frequently invoked, likening its allure to the temptation faced by Adam and Eve. The notion that tobacco was akin to the tree of paradise suggested that its use was a form of original sin, perpetuating a cycle of moral corruption. The idea that Satan had a role in preserving and promoting tobacco underscored the belief that its consumption was an act of spiritual disobedience. The involvement of religious figures in tobacco was viewed as especially scandalous. Reformers criticized clergy who indulged in tobacco during religious ceremonies, arguing that such practices undermine the sanctity of worship and the integrity of religious leadership. The visibility of tobacco use in sacred spaces was perceived as a blatant disregard for the solemnity of religious observance, further illustrating the moral decay associated with tobacco. Clergy who engaged in tobacco use were essentially valuing their habit above the souls of their congregants. Tobacco's pervasive influence was depicted as a form of idolatry. Tobacco was described as a destructive deity that represented a shift in devotion from spiritual to materialistic pursuits. The idolization of tobacco was characterized by the immense financial and emotional investment made by users which reformers argued far surpassed the collective investment in Christian and benevolent causes. Tobacco was seen as a master vice that seduced individuals into its worship, leading them away from virtuous and religious living. Tobacco's impact on individual morality was also framed in terms of its ability to corrupt the very nature of human desires and behaviors. Reformers claimed that tobacco created an unnatural and deforming appetite one that dominated the user's life and became a focal point of daily existence. This all-consuming habit was described as a form of moral degradation, 
for tobacco use became the first thought upon awakening and a constant preoccupation throughout the day and even a last indulgence before sleep. The addictive nature of tobacco was seen as fundamentally at odds with the pursuit of moral and spiritual health, creating a pervasive form of devotion that undermined the individual's capacity for righteous living. So in conclusion, we can see that the vigorous opposition to tobacco did not emerge in isolation during the 20th century. Rather, it has deep roots stretching back to the early 1800s during a period of high reform activism in the United States. This era saw a robust and multifaceted critique of tobacco encompassing its agricultural, social, physical, and moral detriments. However, despite the thoroughness of their critique, anti-tobacco activists faced significant challenges. The movement struggled to maintain momentum as the political and social landscape shifted. The escalating conflict over slavery overshadowed all other reform efforts. The outbreak of the Civil War further diminished the movement's visibility as tobacco became a ration item for both sides of the conflict. In the wake of the Civil War, the anti-tobacco movement attempted to regroup but struggled to regain its former influence. The post-war period saw the rise of cigarettes, which rapidly eclipsed other forms of tobacco use and popularity. The growing prominence of cigarettes became a central focus for the renewed anti-tobacco efforts of the 1880s. Cigarettes were dubbed the coffin nail, the little white slaver, and the little white hearse plume by reformers, reflecting the growing concern over their impact. This marked a turning point in the tobacco industry and represented new challenges for anti-tobacco reformers. Although the new movement faced obstacles, it did not start from scratch. The efforts of early 19th century reformers have laid a foundation for this effort and, and future anti-tobacco campaigns, highlighting the persistence of the struggle against tobacco's influence. This concludes my presentation. Thank you for your time and attention.